Ahead on the PM edition of Race Day, rain, tires, and wreckers, the order of the day in Virginia. Did things go swimmingly for the Cup stars? In Pennsylvania, Robbie was fast, Michael was at home, and why is this man not smiling? A wild weekend of sprint car action. You'll be doing cartwheels after our PM edition of Race Day on Sunday, April 23rd, 1995. Good evening. Welcome to TNN's Race Day. I'm Rick Benjamin. Great to have you with us this Sunday night. A full day of motorsport after all, although rainfall was the big story today in Martinsville and Atlanta. We'll tell you more about that coming up. It's one of the legends of Winston Cup racing that NASCAR leads a charmed life weather-wise. The Daytona 500's never been rained out, and you could count on one hand the number of times a cup race has been delayed by bad weather in recent years. But up in Martinsville, Virginia today, they needed rain insurance, rain tires and rain slickers. A lot of folks doubted the race would even be run today, but after a two-plus hour delay, the Haynes 500 got underway in the cool green racetrack. Everyone thinking it would be a nice smooth run, but it bit fast. Bobby Labonte's second ever pole start didn't last long, looping out of four. Big crash a few laps later. Morgan Shepard gets tapped by Earnhardt, who taps Labonte. They go up and over and into the outside wall. Need more proof that Winston Cup points are important? How about garage area repairs to the three and the 21? Both back out after 20 laps pit side. Everyone's been saying Darrell Waltrip is getting strong again and ready to win. On lap 25, he showed it, taking the lead. But a certain youngster name of Gordon also on the move up on the high side. Everyone wondering when a Ford might break through and win this year. Rusty Wallace, who swept Martinsville last year, did the deed after 135 laps getting to the front. Started to rain again on lap 183. Rusty out in front during the rain delay, and a very long delay it was. Now, here's what happened. They started running about 6 o'clock tonight. Rusty getting the lead back after a pit stop from Darrell Waltrip. They complete 356 laps today at Martinsville. A few minutes ago, Wallace took the checkered flag, and here's how they finished. Wallace, Ted Musgrave with the second spot. Jeff Gordon, a nice third. Waltrip and Martin, your second five. Includes Bobby Labonte, who was a lap down after that early spin today. First Ford victory of 1995. Big day for Roger Penske and his team. We'll show you just how big next. The IndyCar season, different this year. Instead of going to Pennsylvania in the fall, they ran the Bosch Spark Plug Grand Prix today in April at Nazareth to get one more oval round in before Indianapolis. Robbie Gordon qualified quick at more than 187 miles an hour, led from the green. And he had his hands full with Michael Andretti early on. Andretti grabs the lead with this inside move. Two early cautions. First, Paul Tracy out with left front damage. Then Buddy Lazier tries the wall hard. Those two yellow flag periods making some teams think they could go all the way on one fuel stop. Looking Jacques Villeneuve thinking victory today. He and Michael Andretti lock horns for the lead. Jimmy Vassar in the chase as well. Midway, Emerson Fittipaldi gets into the hunt for the first time of the day. He'll pass Michael and engage Villeneuve during a round of pit stops here. Eddie Cheever at AJ Foyt's 14 tries to play the fuel card. He comes from 21st to 4th. And when Villeneuve develops a push, Cheever makes up 11 seconds in four laps and takes the lead. Gambling his early stop would be enough. Cheever will get help twice during this afternoon's event. First, watch Michael. They don't get his right front tire on well. He comes off pit road right into the wall. Then Gilda Ferran will try the concrete, create this fiberglass and rubber shower. No injuries. Race went, race went green with a few laps to go. Would AJ's team make it to victory lane? Not today. Super Texas reaction tells it all. Cheever runs dry. Emmo takes advantage of the flame out, wins his first IndyCar race of the year. The fifth winner in five events. Second straight win for the Penske team. Emmo, the first of the 40 plus IndyCar set to win this year. And let's take a look at your speed stick fast track IndyCar points update. Brought to you by Menon tonight. After five races, Scott Bruitt still out in front. Jacques Villeneuve second in the points. Now, focus shifts to Indianapolis. The month of May, just eight days off, leading up to the 500. On Sunday, May 28th, we'll keep you posted on all the happenings at the Speedway during the coming month. And there's more to come on the PM edition of Race Day. We'll take a slow boat down to Atlanta for the NHRA Tour's Fram Nationals. The ASA Tour opens in Ohio. We'll see who picked up the big Buckeyes next. No trendy health club. No $60 shorts. No bull. Speed stick. It's no-nonsense formula, never quits. It works and works. Protects all day, no matter what. Speed stick. 
for 110% protection. Like you, it never quits. By men. For over 60 years, Mopar Parts Division of Chrysler Corporation has been building a name for itself. The only name guaranteed to perform in Chrysler Corporation vehicles. On the track or on the street. Always insist on Mopar Parts. Oliver and Jeffrey on finish one, two, and the 19. Get real. Get Mopar. In racing, there's no margin for error. The crew follows the same procedures every time the car pulls into the pits. It's the same way at Jiffy Lube. We follow the same strict procedures more than 50,000 times a day. It's your assurance that when you bring your car to Jiffy Lube, the job will be done right. And Jiffy Lube offers Pennzoil. Jiffy Lube, the world's most experienced oil changers. That's why if it doesn't say Jiffy Lube, it just isn't Jiffy Lube. Tonight on TNN Outdoors, on Fishing with Orlando Wilson, Orlando reveals the secrets to really big bass. On Fishing with Roland Martin, Roland reels in the best angling action from Miami to Michigan. On Bassmasters, Ray Scott hosts top tournament competition where it's a test for the best. And on The Great American Outdoors, if you're looking for adventure, Ron Shears got it. Catch all the action tonight on TNN Outdoors. Chrysler Corporation Parts and the Chrysler Plymouth Dodge, Dodge Truck, Jeep, and Eagle dealers who sell and install them. By Jiffy Lube. If it doesn't say Jiffy Lube, it just isn't Jiffy Lube. By Speed Stick, by Menon. Like you, it never quits. Well, another of America's big money racing series beginning the 1995 campaign, a slam bang start for the ASA cars today. We saw the Buckeye 300 live here on TNM this afternoon. This morning on race day, we talked about how anyone with designs on an ASA title has to deal with another GM Goodwrench car, painted black and driven by a seven-time champion, in this case, Mike Eddy. TNN's Brian Drebber tells us while many tried, no one had the answer for Eddy today. Full sitter Jeff Neal in the yellow number 75, the fire oil split fire machine, alongside the wind, Sport City Ford Thunderbird number 7 of Gary St. Amant, sat on the front row for the Buckeye 300. This race at Columbus Motor Speedway. And Jeff Neal jumped out to an early lead, but it wouldn't be long before he got a little boot from Bob Seneca in the 84, and around he went. He would no longer be a factor in this race. On the restart, it was Mike Eddy, the seven-time American Speed Association champion, who jumped out to the lead, and that is where he would stay. Although he was challenged by young Cedar Rapids, Iowa driver number 33, Brad Loney, in the Winnebago Flex Steel machine. Loney, in turn, was also challenged by Glenn Allen Jr. in the number 15 car. And these two waged the best battle of the race. Brad Loney getting a call from his pit crew saying, you've got to go back after it. If you're going to be a champion, back after it, he went. Retaking the second position, and that is where he stayed. Out in front, however, Mike Eddy, well on his way to what could be an eight championship in the American Speed Association, had to go down to the wire, getting a bump from behind from Loney, who got bumped by Glenn Allen. That's the way they finished up with Mike Miller making a great charge from 25th place to finish fourth behind Mike Eddy, who has now taken a step toward his eighth championship. Mike Eddy finishes first ahead of Brad Loney, Glenn Allen Jr., and Mike Miller. Rounding out the top five was Gary St. Amant in the Buckeye 300. The Bluebird Bob Seneca finishes 10th. Plenty of other stock car action nationwide this weekend. The NASCAR Modified Tour in one of its legendary events today, the traditional Spring Sizzler up at Stafford Springs, Connecticut. 24th renewal of the event, now 200 laps long. They've just completed this one. Mike Uanitsko and Lenny Bowler's car wins the event. Rick Fuller, Mike Stefanik, Avery, and Satch Worley, the pride of Rocky Mountain, Virginia, grabs fifth for $55,000 up for grabs. Winston West cars, 3,000 miles out west. Mesa Marin in Bakersfield, California, just ran 200 laps there. This one just over, Bill Sedgwick defeats Doug George. Scott Gaylord with a nice third, Butch Gill and Derek Cope's little brother, Ernie, finishing fifth. Some other highlights to show you. NASCAR's Goodies Dash Series, 100 laps last night at Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Danny Bagwell, the pole sitter in car number 12. Robert Huffman alongside on the green. Many-time champ Mickey York started sixth in his 24 car, but he'll blow a motor with just 20 laps to go. Late in the event, Larry Caudle in the 12, and Huffman in the 37 tangle in one. Huffman spins. He'll finish sixth. York goes on to the victory. Or rather, I'm sorry, Caudle victory by a car length in car number 12. There's the order of finish last night. And Partis rounds out the top ten. NASCAR Slim Jim All-Pros running at Martinsville Saturday. The Haynes 150. Plenty of hard contact. Scott Sutherland 
goes over the top and down onto the backstretch pit road. Ron Barfield and Jimmy Britz continuing on. This is Mike Cope in the 44. Toby Butler in the 80. They will tangle down into turn three. And that'll allow the 14 car, Rick Crawford, to scoot away unmolested to victory lane at Martinsville on Saturday. Here's how they finished. In the Slim Jim 150 yesterday, the Haynes 150, Crawford over Mike Cope, Porter, Bobby Gill. Name of the race trophy to Buckshot Jones yesterday. Super Trucks at Mesa Marin. This was a late Saturday afternoon event. Three wide action here. Sedgwick in the Spears 75. Ron Hornaday and Dale and Teresa Earnhardt 16. Hornaday goes low, makes it three wide, pulls off the pass, and on to victory. Ron Hornaday, your winner last night over Sedgwick. USAC star Mike Bliss, Skinner, and Butch Miller, the top five. Hats off to to Scott Legacy and Sammy Swindell to round out the top ten. Much more to come on race day. The world of outlaws in the Midwest. They hit Indiana and Missouri. Plenty of wild highlights to show you. Out west, the SCRA sprint cars were reaching for the stars. It's a long way down to the clay. We'll show you how far they fell when we come back on race day. In a sport where nerves are made of steel, it's only natural the tools are made by craftsmen. 1,600 craftsmen hand tools made in America, guaranteed forever. The only official tools of IndyCar, NASCAR, NHRA, and the new Super Truck Series by Craftsman. Only at Sears. Monroe developed Sensatrack shocks to smooth out the road for a comfortable ride. But Sensatrack doesn't stop there. It's the only shock that also gives you extra control when you need it most. Sensatrack shocks and struts. Only by Monroe. For comfort and control. Get Sensatrack shocks. Call 1-800-STRUT now for a Monroe ride expert near you. Well, if you love open wheel racing, it has been a great weekend. The wild sprint cars in action coast to coast. A tough couple of days for the SCRA drivers. We're going to show you some highlights from Friday night in Watsonville, California. This is Tim Green taking a wild ride. He narrowly escapes injury. Up front, Brent Kading took the wing off. He starts first and finishes first over Whip, Whip, Rip Williams and Corey Cruzman. Now, Saturday night, this is San Jose. Things get even worse. Cowboy Craig Smith will ride his Bronco up and over the berm and almost out of the ballpark. He is unhurt. And John Scott coming up here, a wild ride in turn four. Look at this one almost out of the ballpark. Gordon Rogers gets flight time. He endos down the front stretch. That makes our Hall of Fame this week. He's unhurt. Who survives it all? Corey Cruzman, the winner. He defeats Ron Schumann and Rip Williams. World of Outlaws action. Friday night, point leader Jack Howdenshield gets rough treatment. Fred Devereaux and Joe Gertie spin in front of the field. Hogg goes up on his tail and out of the wall. He'll go back to the front run and finish 11th. Up front, Mark Kinzer and Danny Losowski go at it. Losowski and Gil Saunders, 47, Mark in the 5. Kinzer had the better until he slid high. Danny goes to the front. Losowski leads the next 13 laps to take the win. Kinzer gets back on course and comes on for second spot. Last night, there's the checkered flag from the Friday night show. Now we'll move to the Saturday night action. Jack Hottenshield again in the Eldon 22 repaired. He wheel stands his way to the star of the show honors, starting 23rd. He dazzles the crowd, works his way up to third spot. Not to be overdone. Mark Kinzer in the five, Dave Blaney in the 10. They'll put on a wheel standing, wheel to wheel show, swapping the top spot back and forth. Check this wheelie by Kinzer. Blaney back on the outside. Three passes. Kinzer bobbles there. Now, Blaney up high, trying to hold off Mark Kinzer. Blaney's going to catch a huge rut right there, and that allows Kinzer to power away, and he goes on to the victory. Blaney holds on for second. Hodenshield rounds out the top three last night in Missouri. Checkered flag waving. Mark Kinzer the winner last night in Benton, Missouri. Blaney and Hodenshield, Andy Hillenberg, and Danny Lusowski. Your top five. The outlaw point chase stacks up this way. Hodenshield, the leader now over Blaney and Lasowski. Mark Kinzer down to fourth, and Stevie Smith down to fifth spot. By the way, we want to mention to you that Knoxville, the legendary uh, fairgrounds oval in Knoxville, Iowa, opened their new season last night. Hats off to Jerry Rickard Jr., who won last night, won the 20-lap round, won $2,500.
Bad news for Terry McCarl. We'll, we're told that he flipped on the final lap at Knoxville last night, broke his arm. He's out for an undetermined length of time. Hope he's back soon. All this leading up to the Knoxville Nationals worth half a million dollars this year. And we'll be there live on TNN Motorsports on Saturday night, August the 19th. You'll see live coverage right here on TNN of the Knoxville Nationals final race, the A-Main that night. More to come. We're going to go off-roading when we come back. The U.S. team is set for the Campbell Trophy. And the SCCA's Pro Rally stars going west to Washington State for the Wild West. We'll show you highlights when we come back. Look what's popping up for spring. Come save a lot of things at Sears Days. Just in time for spring driving, it's Sears' lowest prices ever on great brand name tires. Through Saturday, get huge savings on select Michelin, Bridgestone, Guardsman Plus, and more. Save from 5 to 30%. For our lowest prices ever on these great brand name tires, roll on into Sears Auto Center by Saturday. Come and save so many ways at Sears Days. With all the motor oils on the shelf, how do you know which one to choose? Some people even think they're all the same. Then why do you suppose one brand of motor oil is the number one choice of America's top mechanics for use in their own cars and trucks? Which brand? Valvoline. People who know use Valvoline. And for extra engine protection, try Valvoline DuraBlend Synthetic Blend Motor Oil. Back on TNN's race day, I'm Rick Benjamin. Good to have you with us tonight. Earlier we showed you how like his Winston Cup counterpart, GM Goodrich pilot Mike Eddy is gunning for an eighth title in the ASA series. Eddie started off the quest with a victory today, and after the Buckeye 300, race day's Ralph Shaheen talked with Eddie and his young competitors about the on-track dogfight today. Rick, the 1995 AC Delco Challenge Series finally got underway. Here it is this weekend in Columbus, Ohio, and Mike Eddy, we said at the beginning of the show today that he was going to be the guy to beat if you wanted to win the championship in 95, and he showed up, and you win the race today. You really are making a stand now towards winning that eighth championship. Are you really ready, or are there still some things missing in this program? No, there's nothing missing in this program. Uh, we've got a good program. We've had a good program. Uh, the only thing that hinders us once in a while is stuff we have no control over. But today everything went fine, and hopefully we'll be on our way for our eighth. There was some real tough competition from behind you, and it came from two of the younger stars in the series. Are you surprised by that, or is it their time now? No, I'm not surprised at all. You know, Brad's a, a real good runner, and... Uh, he come around and hung around with us down in Florida, and I think he probably learned more than I thought he did because he really ran good today. <laughs> Brad, you showed a lot of maturity today, and I think that was the best sign we saw out of you. Do you find yourself maturing more as a driver now? Um, I, I think I think um, the, la the the laps, the, the more laps we get, the, the and the more experience we get under our belt, the better we're doing. And and we did take a few notes down in Florida with Mike, so <laughs> maybe we did learn more than he thought. You know, Rick, fans of short track stock car racing always wait for the AC Delco Challenge Series to get underway. And now the 1995 season for the ASA is up and running. And Mike Eddy is letting the world know that an eighth championship in ASA competition is what he is gunning for. The next race comes up in Toledo, and you can see that live on TNN the first weekend in May. All right, thanks, Ralph. We'll certainly look forward to that. Hats off to Mike Eddy, and uh, I was Brad Loney doing a nice job today to finish second. Well, now from the oval tracks, we go to what some consider the real road racing in this world of ours. John Buffum used to dominate the American pro rally scene. He quit competing three years ago. Now his stepson, Paul Schwanier, fills dad's shoes very nicely. He's won every national championship since then. This year, in a brand-new Hyundai Elantra, Paul has had his hands full. Victory margins that they used to calculate in minutes are now down to seconds. Well, in Olympia, Washington this weekend, Schwanier had another near miss. He built up a four-minute lead on Saturday when mechanical gremlins slowed his progress. In the late stages of the event, in car number four, Henry Joy turns up the wick, closes to within 30 seconds of the four-time champ. But despite the pressure and a cracked manifold, Schwanier will hold on and win his first in Olympia since 1991. Other class winners, Sam Bryan and his Group 2 Saab 900, and Tad Otake in the production class in this Celica, Janice Comedio in production GT2, and Jason Priestley in Beverly Hills 90210 right here, rounds out the finishers. He spent 28 minutes ditch bound, made it to the finish line only an hour and 17 minutes behind the winner. No script could call for that. Back on race day, uh, in a moment, we've been following the uh, U.S. Camel Trophy team as they get ready for next month's Central American Adventure. During the final trials in Turkey, the U.S. team made some history. This year, the 16th American Camel Trophy team will be a co-ed team. 
Daphne Green, a 33-year-old outdoor adventure consultant, will team up with Jim Sweat for the 1,000-mile-plus journey. For Green, trekking across Central America's mountains, jungles, and back roads, more than a quest for the Camel Trophy, she says it's really a personal challenge for her. To me, it's the, the challenge of um, meeting and overcoming an obstacle. And each time that you do that, internally you gain strength. And you gain strength as an individual and you gain strength as teammates. And that's something that, for me, is really important to watch grow. And we will keep you updated on the U.S. team's attempt to bring home the Camel Trophy. The journey for those teams begins in May. And there is more ahead on the PM edition of Race Day. We're not done yet. The NHRA drag racers in Atlanta for the Fram Nationals, but they're stuck in pause this evening. We'll explain. Also, the wild cross-country motorcycles will show you who's strong in this tough test in motorsports when we come back. Stick with us. One name these drivers turn to for the quality parts that give their cars the edge they need to perform and win. The same name you should turn to for the only parts guaranteed to perform in your Chrysler Corporation vehicle. Authentic Mopar parts. Available from your Chrysler Corporation dealer. Get real. Get Mopar. It's just too early to make decisions. But I have to decide on breakfast, so I go to Burger King and get a flaky Chris sandwich, hash browns and coffee for just $1.99. But then, do I get it to stay or to go? Breakfast at Burger King. Peerless Faucet didn't come up with the idea for a spout long and high enough to reach over and into large objects. We merely adapted it for the kitchen. High-rise faucet designs by Peerless. Get more out of your faucet than just water. Roland Martin world-class angler trying his luck in the TNN Bass Tournament of Champions on Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis. Wow, you know this is the best fishing game going and now we're offering you some chances to compete and win some great prizes just like the pros but right at home on Super Nintendo or Sega. It's the TNN Bass Tournament of Champions contest. The grand prize is two tracker bass boats. 50 first prize winners will receive Team Daiwa reels. Other prizes include the Rance Fish Finders, Bass Pro Shop gift certificates, and more. It's a tournament that you can start whenever you want. Once you've got your best catch, just take a photo of the screen that shows your catch's total weight. Just like in a real tournament, the best catch wins the grand prize. For complete contest rules, send a self-addressed envelope to this address. Or call 612-467-1400. Or look for the display at your local participating retail outlet. Come on! It's get dark! Welcome back to TNN's Race Day. I'm Rick Benjamin. Fastest racers in the land slowed to a crawl today down in Atlanta. The NHRA drag racers tried to complete the Fram Nationals at Atlanta Dragway, but like we saw at Martinsville, the rain played a big part. In fact, the finals had to be postponed. Here's who's still alive in top fuel. They got to the round of eight. McLenathan and Brotherton, Mike Dunn and Larry Dixon Jr., then Pat Austin and Scott Coletta, Ron Caps and Kenny Bernstein. They'll move to the finals tomorrow. In funny car, John Force, the fast qualifier. They've got to go through the round of 16. Uh, Force and Spurlock, Pedregon and Clapshaw among the top runners there. And in pro stock, uh, we'll show you those qualifying runs. Warren Johnson on the pole over Bill Glidden. Scott Jeffrey and Daryl Alderman could do no better than qualifying fifth. All this will run tomorrow starting at 9 a.m. Now in top fuel today, they did get one round in. I'm going to show you a spectacular win by Kenny Bernstein. Bernstein and Shelly Anderson in the near side to the camera in the Western Auto Car. Bernstein and the Budweiser King top fueler. Lights go green. Bernstein out quickly. He will hold on to win, but check this. A flame out. Bernstein saws a motor in flames. But he does defeat Shelly Anderson, and the King will replace that motor, and we assume go on and run tomorrow. We'll have all the highlights and results for you next week. Now, Grand National Cross Country Motorcycle Racing, one of the toughest types of racing anywhere. The riders have to hang out of those bikes for a long time, for three hours, in fact, at each event, while navigating, or maybe not navigating, tree-filled forests, rock-covered trails, and the occasional down tree, plus muddy creek beds. Former series champion Scott Summers dominated this form of the sport from 1990 through 92, but he's struggled with injuries since 1993. Now, though, the magic seems to be back. Summers recently regained the top spot in the series, winning the second and third races of the year, giving him the series point lead. There's been three races, and uh, I got second in the first one in Florida, and then I won the one in North Carolina, and then I won today. So 
I mean, I'm sitting in pretty good shape, but you know, you never know what could happen. You have to be careful out there. We're going uh, at a high rate of speed, uh, close to some real solid ob objects out there. So just have to be careful and be cool and stay in shape. The Honda rider appears poised to add another title to his racing portfolio. He understates the danger factor, I think, quite a bit. Before we leave you on TNN's race day this Sunday night, our Mopar Performer of the Week, hats off to Eddie Cheever of the AJ Foyt 14. Eddie had that race at Nazareth in the bag today. They were half a gallon short on fuel. And uh, our condolences, really, I think, to the Foyt team. A lot of us would like to see AJ and Cheever in the winner's circle. Eddie Cheever gets the Performer of the Week prize this week from us here at race day. Well, that's all the time we have on this Sunday evening. Thanks so much for being with us this week on this most difficult week for many in this country. A national day of mourning today for those wounded and killed in the explosion in Oklahoma City this week. And our condolences to their friends and family members. Next week on race day, Winston Cup, IROC, and ARCA all heading to the world's fastest speedway at Talladega. The IndyCar teams gather at the speedway to kick off the month of May. Formula One back in action in Italy, and there will be plenty of short track excitement, too. We'll preview all the action next Sunday morning. Our AM edition of Race Day airs at 11.30 Eastern. We'll have all the highlights. We'll hear from the winners and the losers on the PM edition of Race Day at 7.30 next Sunday night. Thanks for watching. Have a great week. We'll see you here next Sunday on TNN's Race Day. I'm Rick Benjamin. Race Day is brought to you by Mopar. Chrysler Corporation Parts and the Chrysler Plymouth Dodge, Dodge Truck, Jeep, and Eagle dealers who sell and install them. Fee and consideration have been paid by Racing Radios for all of your business and